everyone. Today I want to show you how I do these sort of watercolor blobs uh, that I then turn into flowers with doodling. So you've seen, um, you might have seen this video. If not, then go have a look. This is a very simple way of creating florals. But today I'm going to do something a little bit more detailed, which is this. So it's going to be um, more concentrating on the doodling. And you can create lovely florals and um, just by spending a bit of time with your ink pen. So for this, I'm going to use uh, <clears throat> the uh, fountain pen, which is the platinum carbon ink. And however, I'm going to use it at the end rather than before. So we're going to blob some watercolors. For that, I'm going to use this palette that I have created um, for uh, face and a doll illustrations however it is a lovely color palette for florals as well because it has plenty of pinks yellows and greens lovely colors to uh, be used in florals as well so this palette actually doubles for for that purpose as well if you're interested and for brush i'm going to use the jackson school brush in tan zero so that is it for paper this is a uh, jane davenport canvas journal and it's um i mean it does warp but it's a great little sketchbook to have um if you are experimenting with something if you're learning and just not to be too precious with it i think it's a gr great sketchbook and i definitely would repurchase it for that purpose because so let's start with the watercolor so looking at my um at my swatch card i quite like this red i have been literally obsessed with it ever since buying it for this particular palette when i was putting it together so that's this color it's the daniel smith paraline scarlet absolutely love it i don't think i actually will use many other colors to mix it with I might do one of the yellows, but we'll see. Let's just um, be creative. So when you're creating these florals, the key is to think of a little uh, composition beforehand. So where would you like them to be? Um, but the other thing that's good to do is just to be loose and enjoy the actual process. So I'm just going to take this beautiful, gorgeous red you don't need that much of it because it's it's quite quite a bright color and i'm just going to sort of blob it on to here mostly putting it into the center and one possibly large one around here like that and looking at it i would like one small one just around here so while the watercolor is quite wet still i'm just going to play with it and make it softer that of course is what watercolor is all about this beautiful effects that you can get with it um are gorgeous now i'm thinking whether i should introduce any yellows okay i think i will go into the indian yellow this is probably my favorite yellow in general so throughout any brand indian yellows are gorgeous and i'm just going to stick it into these centers and just you know let it happen I'm not forcing anything here and it's quite a strong color so it will force itself uh, through the red and sort of dominate a little bit as you can see what happened up here and that's all i'm going to do i'm going to leave it quite simple just two colors make sure that it's completely dry before you move on to the next step okay so i just actually realized something i'm going to take away the watercolors 
for now because we won't need them anymore. But I did realize that the illustration that I have shown you, which is this one here, I actually used a different pen. So I didn't use this one. I used the uh, new pan that I got which is it's not uh, waterproof the ink in there so it's it's okay to use after um, you know your watercolors are dry anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it on these two flowers and because I promised you in the beginning of the video that I will use this pan I will also use it but I will use it on on this flower just to give you an idea and then you can uh, pick which one you prefer okay so I'm going to do the original two flowers as I did uh, previously so first of all what I like to do is just to outline the flower now you can be careful or loose it's it's really uh, up to you so this flower I will make stand out and then this one is sort of peeking out from behind so it's a little bit of a layered look I suppose so we're giving these uh, flowers a bit of a frame the next thing I did is do the same on the center so these are the centers and if you don't have anything to outline just do a kind of like a random shape to them okay so then what I like to do next is do uh, do the doodling and I probably will zoom in for this part so hopefully you can see okay I'll start with this one so it's a smaller flower and I'm going to here is the thing so basically it will need to overlap wherever the flower is the dominating flower so I think in this case actually the smaller flower will be in the foreground so once you pick mo pick your mind on that then you can go over with the doodling on top of the uh, other flower if that makes sense so you saw what I've done here I've gone over it and you can choose any pattern and just repeat it. It could be round, it could be elongated, it could be uh, just um, a little um, sticks. It, it can be anything you want. And I promise you, this is a super, super relaxing and therapeutic thing. And actually, um, I'm pre-recording these videos because uh, I have quite a busy week ahead. And I want to make sure that you have four videos every week. So, um, and when I started uh, filming today, I actually was not feeling great um, and was feeling a bit sick. And I have to tell you, I'm so, I'm feeling so much better now. Uh, the, the color therapy is just the best thing ever. So here you go. So we've got a little outline with a little, denty kind of almost like a lace edge to it and then in this case I'm going to do I'm going to go for a different um, for a different edging so I like this sort of thing this takes longer but I will go with it and then I will stop where this flower is in the foreground so that it looks like you obviously can't see it because in the back it's in the background so that's the idea of this and I like to put them quite close together uh, and then just go with the shapes and then sometimes you need to fill one in in the in the gap so it's not too um, open there so what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead a few. I started by filling and going towards the other end and then I do the one that fills it in and that way it looks a little bit more uniform. So um, you may need, depends how you like working, but I do like to turn my sketchbook as I go to give me a better angle. But the key element is to not have too much 
over lining. I think it looks very pretty when it's a single line and it looks quite clean and it looks like it's placed, like the line, ink line, is placed exactly where the painter or the illustrator was meaning to place it. So it looks well thought through and planned out. However, because every one of those patterns is not exactly identical, it still looks quite um, nice and, you know, artsy. So then I would do um, the center and the center you can create different sort of um, patterns or you can repeat. So I'm going to repeat on this small one the same pattern that I've done on the uh, outside. I'm going to bring it in into the inside. So um, you can, if you want, create some centers within the center but that of course would kill the watercolor because imagine if you start drawing in here the um, watercolor won't be as um, as evident as it is right now so I'm going to leave it as it is and around here I'm just going to do probably the simplest of doodling these short sticks make sure they are they have similar gaps between them and then you can pull out some of the sticks a bit longer some of them a bit shorter and just create a little um, you know interest there so to finish the flower I then go in and do these skinny stems and you can leave it at that but I actually um, going to add some of these dainty little um, leaves like so and let's see so I think I'm going to do one on each on this side and this side like so And then I also like to add a little triangle just where it hits the flower and that makes it look like the stem is holding the flower. Well to me it does and I like it as a little um, addition right there. There you go. Now the other thing is of course you going to see what this pen looks like and whether you prefer it or you think it looks exactly the same. So this is the uh, waterproof one. So I'm doing exactly what I've done before, nothing different and creating these edgings and then, I don't know, let's see, what shall I do? I want this flower to be the dominating flower so I probably won't repeat the pattern and I'll go for this pattern here. You can do a completely different pattern if you want but I do like the magical three when it comes to painting or illustrating and so I find that it looks quite good when you repeat a pattern or a color elsewhere in the illustration it kind of brings it together is what I feel so I'm following the wonky line uh, but trying to keep it tidy at the same time so here we go so I'm not sure what, what happened to the color so I'm going to quickly now do the dots
And after that, I then can think of what to do with the center. And I'll probably do the center that is here, the, the outskirt, but I'm going to do it just smaller, like so. So we've got the repetition from here and repetition from there, and it looks like it just belongs together, like it's a baby <laughs> from these two mama and papa flowers. Uh, try to connect your lines as you do the doodling because sometimes it can end up looking like the line is messy because it's not connected, like it's floating in the air and it makes no sense. But that is all I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to do the stem and make it a little bit shorter, like so. And then the leaves will be up here because it would be too low if I would um, stick them on there basically. Always connect the line in the end and, and then I'm thinking just to give it a nice bit of a triangle here. Uh, it's a bit big of a triangle but to be honest with you um, I'll probably have to do because this one is overlaid with the pattern and it looked a bit messy so I'm going to correct it and fill it in a bit more and in fact this one is looking a bit too small now so I'm going to bring it out to about the same size so they're still not too huge but they're probably bigger than I usually would like to do but I quite like it. So there you go. I don't know if you can spot any difference. Um, I think this pen is marginally thinner. So if you have an eye for uh, great detail, you will probably notice that. Otherwise, you know, you can easily do uh, this illustration with the fountain pen and it's, it would be still very pretty. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, please... Um, Put the um, thumbs up because that really helps uh, this channel and yeah thanks for watching and see you soon